continuing our study of the book of Revelation, let's go on to chapter 3, Sardis. Well, Sardis was an interesting city. Way back in 700 BC, King Gugez, that was really his name, King Gugez, started minting coins from the gold and silver found in the Pactolus River that flowed right by the city. The Pactolus River came coming down from Mount Timolus. The story of the golden touch of Midas comes from this place. And of course, the story about the golden touch was that the god gives Midas the great blessing that everything he touches turns to gold. Touches something, it uh, turns to gold. Well, that's really great, but Midas discovered that it was a curse because when he tried to take a drink of water, everything turned to gold. When he tried to, tried to eat some fruit, the fruit turned to gold too. So then Midas asked the god to be freed from that, and so the god said, go wash in the Pactolus River. And so Midas, King Midas, according to the myth, went and washed in the river, and that's why the river had so much gold in it, according to the myth. But the truth is that in 700 BC, the king Gugez used started using the gold and silver from the Pactolus River and started minting coins there. Some say that was the first minting of coins ever in the world, some say. Herodotus and Xenophon were two of the ancient Greek historians. They tell an interesting story about Sardis. They say that in what we call 546 BC, King Cyrus, we know him from the Old Testament, King Cyrus came and tried to attack the mighty fortress city of Sardis. Now, you have to understand, in those days, the mighty fortress city of Sardis was built up on this steep mountaintop, very steep. Three sides were very steep, and one side there was a narrow, easily defended access. Very steep. So, in fact, some might have said that Cyrus was foolish to even try to conquer the city of Sardis because it was a, a cliché, a very common cliché or expression. When you wanted to talk about doing something impossible in that time and in that general region, you would say, that's like conquering the Acropolis of Sardis. Acropolis, acro, high, polis, city. Acropolis means the high city and in this case, the fortified high city way on top of the mountain so that where Sardis was built. So that was a cliche. That's like conquering the Acropolis of Sardis. But Cyrus went and tried to attack. He tried, failed. He tried and failed. And then Herodotus and Xenophon give different versions of how this mighty, unconquerable fortress was conquered. And that's the stories are very interesting. Which one is true, or is either of them true? We don't really know. Let me tell you the story that Herodotus tells about how Sardis fell in 546 BC. One day, uh, the King Cyrus was unsuccessful in his attacks, so he said to his officers, and maybe to all his men, if anybody can figure out a way to conquer Sardis, there'll be a great reward for them. Well, one of the men, one of Cyrus's men, watched carefully, and what happened? Way up on top of the fortress, a certain soldier knocked over, dropped his helmet off out of the fortress, and it tumbled down the cliffside, down the mountainside. But that soldier was a local boy, and he knew how to climb that mountain just like a goat. And so he, that he, and he would get into big trouble if he lost his, war helmets were expensive if he lost his helmet. So he knew exactly how to go down the cliff, hold on to this bush here, use that rock there, hold on to that root there, and get on down. And he grabbed his helmet, probably put his helmet on, and then went back up, just hold on to this root, grab that bush, use that rock, and got back and looked around. Oh, good, nobody saw me. I'm not in trouble. We can imagine. But anyway. He was seen by an enemy soldier. He was seen by one of the soldiers of Cyrus. And so he went to Cyrus and said, I can do it. I can lead some men up there. And Cyrus said, ah, do that. I think it was at night. He sent him at night with, some, with a, a group of men. 
just go in and get that gate open. And they went in, no one was watching them, no one was on guard at the top, and they broke in, they got the gate open, Cyrus was able to rush in and destroy the city, end the civilization, again, that had a thousand year history that night, because the people and the soldiers of Sardis were inattentive, they were not on guard, they were lazy. That's the story that Herodotus tells about how the city of, the fortress city, the unconquerable Acropolis of Sardis fell in one night. The fact is that people of Sardis and the, all everybody around thought it was an unconquerable fortress city. And in one night, the city was overthrown and the kingdom, which had a thousand year long history, ended that night. Why? Because even though they were besieged by this angry King Cyrus, very powerful king, they didn't worry because they were in an unconquerable fortress. And so they just took it easy up there and they weren't really watching very carefully and everything will be fine. Don't worry, there's no problem. And bam, the kingdom was finished and it doesn't ever really recover. So that's an interesting story from the history of the unconquerable city of Sardis. Then the fact is that in 214 BC, that first conquering happened at 546, the kingdom never recovered. Of course, the fortress was occupied by the victorious Cyrus and the city continued as a city, but the kingdom lost everything then. Well, several hundred years later, that was 546, much later in, two, in 214 BC, Antiochus the Great also attacked, besieged and attacked the city and failed and failed. And then finally in the night, someone, I guess it was nighttime, somebody figured out a way to get up this steep mountain and in one night, bam, again, the city fell. They, they thought they, they didn't learn the lesson from 546 BC from the attack of Cyrus. And they were again conquered suddenly. Now that is going, that's an interesting historical fact. That's, you know, the exact details are not, are debated between these two historians, but the fact is twice in their history, this proud um, and, and not on guard city, careless city was conquered by enemies twice in their history. There were five roads that met there at Sardis. And so they had good trade opportunities. There were sheep in the hillsides around Sardis that produced good wool so they could make money from that. But Sardis was after the gold, and after the gold all disappeared, Sardis never, didn't really have the wealth. By the time the book of Revelation was written, Sardis wasn't as wealthy as Laodicea. In fact, they were known as a lazy, city. They were known as a lazy city that was interested in pleasure seeking rather than hard work. So originally the city, uh, the great Acropolis of Sardis was on top of the mountain. But when the Pax Romana came, and that's the great peace that the Roman Empire brought throughout its empire, there was no need for this cumbersome, high on the top of the mountain city because there were no wars, there were no other cities attacking the city. So they abandoned the high city and they put the city, they rebuilt the new, new city of Sardis at the bottom, at the foothills of this high mountain throughout all the years of the Pax Romana. And then in, by 450 AD, the Pax Romana was gone and, and intercity warfare returned and there was great danger. And so they rebuilt the high city that, it, that had been abandoned for so many years, for maybe 500 years. They rebuilt that high city up on top of the mountain and it remained there for a thousand years. 
Today, when you go there, you see only that you see the mountain is there, but you can tell that it's a kind of a, it's a kind of a mountain that crumbles, and there's been a lot of landslides. So the it's certainly a, not as high as it used to be, but the mountain is still there. So that's the background of the city of Sardis.